Hi, I'm Leslie Julian, co-writer of Head Cases. You can find me at headcasescomic.com, where I currently have uh, the comic Head Cases crowdfunding. And you are watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Welcome to Rapid Fire. The concept of rapid fire is simple, 11 questions, nine to 15 minutes for the interview itself. And we get to talk with creative and talented people in the entertainment industry. So who is our first guest today? Our guest is a returning guest. He is coming back from a previous comic as he was on the show last year. He is the creator of the amazing comic Head Cases, which is of course at headcasescomic.com. We're joined today by the ever talented Leslie Julian. How are you doing today? Doing good. How you doing, Kurt? Doing good. Good to have you back on. It's It's been forever. Yeah, I know. It's lovely to be back. <laughs> For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking. I am uh, Leslie Julian. Uh, I'm a comic writer. I've written a few comics like uh, Ghost Gauntlet, about a girl who punches her way to heaven. I've done like a lot of short comics that have found some nice notoriety <laughs> on Twitter. I have also previously uh, crowdfunded Savage Wizard, which I was previously on uh, Two Geeks Talking for. And now I'm here about uh, head cases. The question I want to ask is, uh, how many days left? How much do you have to go and what has been your experiences with so far with the crowdfunding campaign so there are nine days left in the campaign we actually got a little bit of an extension uh just because of uh kind of san diego comic-con and uh the, the unfortunate timing with that so uh, actually we've extended the campaign a little bit longer so we're going to be ending nine days from now we have uh just a little over uh, 1.6K, uh, hopefully reach our goal. It's been interesting uh, working with Crowdfunder and they're uh, like a, a brand new platform. There's been a, a little bit of a challenge in terms of reaching our normal audience. It's It's been a lot of fun, fun challenge, you might say. Now, I've seen your promotion on social media. You're, you're definitely promoting the heck out of it and you have a lot of, oh, yeah. a lot of great uh, follows and, and retweets with it as well too. So it's wonderful to see here. So why the change from Crowdfunder to, instead of a, a a normal platform like Kickstarter or Indiegogo? I think it was not long after Kickstarter was kind of getting into like crypto uh, blockchain space. AJ and uh, I were kind of just open to maybe uh, looking at another crowdfunding platform. And so uh, kind of funny enough, we had the opportunity after like a mutual friend of ours uh, kind of let us know about Crowdfunder. And so we were able to uh, to reach out to David Barak, who who's over at uh, Crowdfunder, and uh, pretty much just uh, talk to him about what Crowdfunder has to offer and uh, the differences from uh, other platforms. After we had that initial meeting with them, uh, we said, hey, let's uh, kind of kick the tires on this new platform and, and just give it a shot. Give the underdog a shot. <laughs> That's good to see. I'm glad there's something else out there that people will gravitate towards, I'm sure. So then looking at head cases, what is the concept of head cases and who's the, who's the team with you this time around? Head cases is pretty much the story of two, you might say, bumbling teens who end up stealing a bag uh, from, unbeknownst to them, a hitman. And inside the bag is a decapitated head. And it's the chronicle of them trying to survive uh, this encounter and uh, growing up and learning a lot more about themselves throughout this uh, pretty crazy journey. The team is uh, made up of myself. AJ O'Mason is my co-writer. We have Paolo Sampiao, who does line art. Uh, Warnia K. Sahadewa did the colors and Micah Myers uh, did the lettering on this comic. The comedian or the serial killer? <laughs> <laughs> Neither. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Fair enough then. So then once you started getting this this concept together uh, with your co-writer as well too, you know, how did that, the first idea spark in your mind, uh, both of your minds, I should say, for this, this comic? Thing? It was a little bit of an accent actually. Um, so initially we were going to do like a fantasy type of story, but AJ um, was doing something kind of similar at the time. He, I think had just signed his deal with uh, IDW for the graphic novel um, trilogy that he's uh, putting out with them in uh, 2023, Cloud9. He wanted to do something totally different. So we scrapped our initial ideas and we took some time away from uh, what we were doing. And we got back together and we said, okay, what can we do that different than that? And we kind of landed on, I think, like a crime story. I think we were both had like semi-recently read Four Kids Walk Into the Bank. And 
we we kind of went to go something uh, maybe a little bit closer to that direction. We were kind of back bouncing ideas back and forth, like how should this idea go? I think pretty quickly we said, okay, like what well, we have these teen protagonists, what can we have them do? What if they steal something? And what's that something? And we kind of just went for the craziest idea out there. Of what if they steal uh, this head, this decapitated head, and uh, kind of uh, work backwards and uh, built the story around that um, kind of central piece, which is really the first six pages of the comic is, yeah, the kids uh, stealing the flat head. From the brief quick read I got to read, I, I, I enjoyed the initial setup. I thought it was really well done and, and it definitely hooked me for sure. Is this going to be like a one shot or a series or what's the what's the game plan? It's plan is a four issue mini series. Definitely looking to uh, hopefully get funded so we can pay uh, Palo and the rest of the creative team uh, for this issue and uh, move on uh, to the next one so uh, we get um, everything completed and fulfilled. Besides the init- the concept you came up with, what were some of the ideas you want, you were bouncing off each other that pushed your bar up to a decapitated head in a suitcase? So the head actually came pretty quickly. Like once we kind of figured out more of the direction we want to go, because initially we were saying like, okay, what well, if they stole it from like a parent? And what if a parent was like, say like government or CIA? And once we kind of got away from that idea, we came up with the head angle and uh, it kind of became the story uh, you'll see a little bit later in, in the series, but it's a story about these um, cults. And so you got some cult activity in here and you got uh, this deranged hitman that is after them that's working for one of the cults. And like I said, things just escalate but the more and more you go into the story like things just escalate quickly and so like pretty much like a lot of the city is after these kids and in this head once the script was completed and he got the the art back for some of the pages what was what was some of the artwork that turned out way better than what the script showcased I think it's maybe the page where I think it's like the third or fourth page where characters Hila and Ramon are, are exiting the, the subway car. And I just love the dynamic nature of, of what uh, Paolo did. Even though we, we scripted it, just seeing it drawn, it's like, wow, yeah, Paolo like, knows what we're going for. Like, I thought that was incredible. And also um, the reveal of the head is <laughs> amazing. I think Paolo just, yeah, we had something in our head, but Paolo still just knocked it out of the park in, in terms of um, what he did. I think that's why people are gravitating towards this book because it, it's real pretty to look at for sure. I just happened upon the image in your, in your crowdfunding campaign gallery there. And I was like, that's a pretty awesome head there. Yeah. <laughs> you can easily fit the head in a bag, you know, mm-hmm. instead of trying it in real life. It's totally a whole different concept. Exactly. Not that I know anything about that. But, <laughs> but then looking at, at this creative process, now that you're you're getting this book completed now that you have your campaign in the tail end of it what have you learned then from the initial start of this campaign to what you're currently dealing with in this last week or so with the campaign i would say uh, you know despite the fact that i feel like uh i reached out to outlets early enough i would say you can maybe never be too early uh, i you know i have definitely gone on an interviewing blitz but i think something i would you know tell other uh, creators to do is you know like Make sure to dot your I's and cross your T's, you know, two, maybe even three months in advance if you, you think you might need to, just because you really don't know schedules and there's always so many moving parts. So I would say definitely uh, reach out and uh, contact, uh, you know, outlets and interviewers and YouTubers uh, <laughs> as early as possible, just because there's so many things that happen. Your schedule changes, their schedule changes. So I think that's definitely uh, something that I've uh, been uh cognizant of uh, as the con- campaign's been going on for sure is uh, be early. <laughs> Especially, yeah, now you see how busy things are now. This is a really busy, uh, I feel like crowd season maybe season yeah. maybe more, more than usual even. What are three things that you accomplished with this project and what are three things when slash if this gets funded that you're hoping to accomplish with this team in the future? Three things that we've accomplished, I would say we, we definitely, I think, did something unique and different. I, I think that's something that a lot of people have uh, come back and uh, reached out to us. It's like, wow, this is such a, you know, different story. It's, it just feels like it, it's its own thing. So I think that's definitely uh, one of the, the bigger things that we've accomplished. Also, just another successful uh, collaboration with, with a co-writer, um, this process was um, very different with AJ compared to, to Doug. I kind of served as the, the main writer for this first issue and AJ edited. And so that was a really different process, but I think we, we did really well with uh, what we did. 
And I think people are really going to enjoy what they read. And the uh, third thing that a officer, I guess, would say just my quote unquote marketing, I feel has been <laughs> fairly effective. I mean, I've been having a lot of fun with my my memes and all, all the stuff that I've been doing to to push the book. And I think it's been working and gearing people um, towards this project. So that's been a lot of fun. And definitely the main thing is, of course, uh, getting it in people's hands or getting on, on people's, you know, uh, e-readers or whatever. They're going to be using to read this book. I just uh, can't wait to, to fill this, fulfill this book and, and to get it read. The second thing I would hope to accomplish is uh, ideally uh, keep the team together. I really like uh, the creative team that we have. Everyone is very busy and very talented. Paolo, he's uh, getting some more uh, work with publishers. So I'm really hoping to yeah, get this book funded so we can get him paid and uh, keep him on board before he gets too big for us. And the uh, third thing I would say, um, I, I just want to put out a book that people enjoy and think is interesting. And uh, yeah, I, I hope uh, people like what they read. Was there anything that I haven't touched on that you'd like to showcase those that are watching and listening to this interview other than the social media and where we can find you? We'll do that fairly shortly. Nothing in particular. I mean, I, I just, yeah, come check out the book. Headcases is a, uh, said uh, a book that i like to describe as a uh, pulp fiction meets uh, uh ferris bueller's day off it's about these two kids that just really get sucked into a world of craziness and there's a lot of fun like uh from the get-go well then of course where can we find you how can we support you and of course where can we find you in the future uh you can find me pretty much everywhere on the internet at less right so my website is less right.com that's w-r-i-t-e or twitter that's again less right instagram i'm less underscore right but yeah pretty much everywhere if you type less right you'll find me <laughs> awesome and i do hate to say it but that ends this particular episode of two geeks talking thanks so much for coming on the show thanks again for having me appreciate it and of course come back you know with your next project i'd love to see who you bring for your team as well too that'd be great to see yeah, definitely. It's going to be a blubber, whatever it is. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> you can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. And of course, on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash tgtmedia. And please subscribe because we're trying to get our thousand subscribers by the end of this year. We, of course, at the end, almost the end of July. Go figure. That's crazy. The year is flying by too, too fast. And... Our Patreon as well, which is patreon.com forward slash TGT Media. I'm posting these interviews and, of course, other content as well, too, that is only exclusive to the Patreon, which is thanks for listening, watching everyone on Two Geeks Talking, where everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out.